What's going on, Badger fans? We got a recruiting heavy show for Locked On Badgers. We're going to talk with Brian about Michael Reske committing, plus a couple of enormous defensive targets that have been on campus or are coming on campus. All that and more on today's Locked On Badgers. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, Badger fans? Welcome to Locked On Badgers. Thank you for listening to this every single day. I really do appreciate it, making it your first listen of the day. Um, today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. Terms and conditions to apply. And this is a recruiting show. Let's, let's get the man on. Let's get Brian Smith on. It's been a, a couple weeks um, since we had Brian on. And since that point, we have had the Michael Reske commitment. I talked about it, but I haven't had a chance to go back to Brian, talk to him about the player, what he's seen on the recent film, a big get for the Badgers. This is the kind of kid that I think of when I think about the big W on the helmet. Uh, man, is he a great athlete, man. He I don't know if he's wrestled or is it track kid or whatever, but unlike most kids that are 6'6", 300 pounds or whatever he is, his feet in space, he's more like a tight end. This is a kid that I, you know, I don't like to project freshmen to play at offensive line, but as a sophomore, if he started for the Badgers, wouldn't surprise me in the least. Resky has tremendous ability to change direction and hit a moving target that weighs 125 pounds less than him. That is not easy. And as I told you before the show, he reminds me of the ping pong, ping pong guy because he's like the paddle hitting the little guys. The level he's playing at in, in high school, and it's kind of hilarious because he's 20 times better than anybody on the field, and he's just murdering guys. So the, the film is entertaining, too. But great athlete. I think he could play right or left tackle. And the Badgers, uh, they got one to stay home. They've been struggling to keep some guys home. That's a big pickup for the program as well. Well, and let's. I want to go there with Resky. I, I had somebody tell me that maybe – and listen, offensive linemen, you and I have talked about this, notoriously hard to project, notoriously hard to figure yes, out what they're going to look like for three years. Um, I had a couple of people say, hey, I think he's maybe more of a guard. I, he looks like a tackle to me as much as I'm guard. No, he's tackle. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's where I'm at. I'm curious <laughs> on your take on this. Look, when your first couple of clips on a huddle highlight, are you out in space making guys, you know, they, they're trying to make him change direction and he still gets both hands on them and physically launches them and decletes them? It's a good sign. So I know he's not playing the greatest comp. But like literally, it looked like a ping pong ball flying through the air that he was hitting. He's got very heavy hands. He could play guard, sure. But if you've got those kind of feet, put his butt on, over there at tackle and let's work with him for a year or so. If it doesn't work out, the last stop on the bus stop is offensive guard. Start him at tackle. Let's see what happens there first. Talk to me about, you mentioned the feet. That's one of the first things you went to with rescue, the feet, the athletic, right. athletic and the ability to move in space. What is the most difficult thing for you to evaluate watching film on a high school offensive tackle playing in competition that isn't maybe up to that level. Is it, I, we're, what's difficult for you there? It depends on the offense. If you send me a prospect and say, Brian, Wisconsin's interested in this kid, I'll watch whoever it is. But if you send me a prospect and he's in a wing T offense against that kind of competition, I'm going to cuss you when I get you back on. You can't evaluate it. It's impossible because they're just running over guys and they never pass that. You need to see guys in space away from the kill zone, if you will, because like when you're 300 pounds and you're going against guys 210, I mean, you can totally screw up and still win the rep. He's doing a good job of taking his time, using patience, stalking the guy. And then when it gets close enough to the opportunity to strike, he does. He's not lunging. He's had somebody coaching. Resky's not just a random guy that's an athlete that puts on a helmet on Friday nights and he's going to Wisconsin. He might have done some other sports. Maybe it's basketball. Maybe it's track. I don't know. But his feet and his patience tell me that he's a little bit more of a mature kid and how he's worked out and how he's prepared. And I'm guessing that he's a guy that just really likes it because, again, when you're bigger, stronger, faster than everybody, it's easy to be lazy. Mm -hmm. He doesn't seem that way at all. So for me, he's the easier of most of these kids because most offensive line film, man, it's horrible because they're just mauling people and they just fall on them. And it's like, they don't look athletic drives me nuts, but not with him. 
So it, it's much easier. It, I, I can do an eval on him on five to 10 plays. Most often, offensive linemen, you need to watch countless because it's about consistency and it's hard to do at the high school level. Uh, we, you and I have laughed about uh, with a couple prospects, the the ranking process, whether it's the composite, two for seven rivals, sure. or on three, whatever it is. Um, he's a high three star when you look at the composite, which kind of melds all that together. If Brian Smith had his own recruiting service, the recruiting website of Brian Smith, which by the way, you should have. Um, but if you did, <laughs> where do you, where do you think you would rank him on the traditional recruiting ranking kind of sliding scale? He's a top 250 kid. O-line is awful to rank. Uh, John Garcia, who's I know has been on your show, he's a close friend of mine. I was at his house yesterday, and he was in the middle of a, a meeting with the guys he works with at Rivals doing rankings. And we're just sitting there. I was talking to his wife, and he had you know, like the mute button on. And we're t- he's asking me some questions about guys, this and that. O-line is the one they hate discussing because it's the hardest. You're not playing against guys your own size. You know, when you go to the Under Armour thing, everybody, all the reporters just run and beat the crap out of each other to get their camera in front of the O-line, D-line dress because we never get to see guys same size go against each other. DB, I get to see a gazillion because of seven on seven. It's, everybody's done at the lineman drills. So, yeah, it's it's different, man. But I, I, would, I would say 250, and I'm projecting it based on mostly – out in space. I need to see, like, I know the people on your show hate me bringing up like four to Georgia kids until I see him go up against those guys in an all-star game setting. I don't know how he can pass protect. That's right. the one thing you just have to, you have to see him go up in, against a guy that is nasty, mean, and athletic. I haven't seen that yet. That's the one strike against him. And it's not really his fault. Right. Sure. You, you absolutely have to see it. But as you said, it's not really his fault that those guys aren't lighting yeah. against them. Do you, and last question on rescue for a guy like that, do you just look at the physical tools then and say, we, because you can't measure, as you said, how, how he's going to go up against like a nasty defensive lineman. What, like the heart sure. there, but arms checked, arms length, heavy hands, footwork, mirror. He can mirror a guy, like those things. The fist from the physical side, it, it seems like he checks all the box there. I think even more important ways, he's already seems to like again the patience mirroring a guy when you're an offensive lineman is not a normal task. See, kill, see, kill. Like there's a, not a lot of a lot of them are just meatheads. They are. It's just true. He's not that guy. I'm not saying he doesn't look for kill shots and that poor kid that's still launching through the air like the ping pong ball. Yeah, it was hilarious. That film is hilarious. It's just one of those deals, man, where you're looking at it and you're like, if he can do that now, he's going to get college coaching. Mm -hmm. He's just going to get better. Worst case scenario ends up being a right tackle for the Badgers is how I see it. I I don't know who's projecting him at guard, but – Again, if he if he's playing there, that just means they have older, experienced tackles. As a senior, if he's not playing tackle, I'll be shocked. Oh, that's great takes. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back and talk about a massive prospect in the 25 class that was on campus last week in a big defensive back. We're going to talk about the next on Lockdown Badgers. But first, a quick break for our friends of the show over at Prize Picks. What is Prize Picks? Prize Picks is the fastest daily fantasy sports platform in North America, and it's the fastest growing for a reason. They are incredibly easy to use, simple, and it's just you against the numbers. You no longer have to compete against, <clears throat> excuse me, thousands of other players and people and the numbers, and it's exhausting, and you, you just can't keep up. And it's not for normal people, but but prize picks between you pick between two and six players over under on statistical categories and watch the money roll in. It's as easy as that. More or less passing yards, rushing yards, receiving your touchdowns, whatever it is. And with prize picks, you now get Apple Pay, so it's quick, fast, easy deposits into your account and weekly promotions for big payouts like taco tuesday each tuesday prize picks is a great fun environment to do all your daily fantasy right now go over to prizepicks.com slash lockdown college use code lockdown college for a first deposit match up to 100 dollars. that's prizepicks.com slash lockdown college use code lockdown college for a first deposit match up to 100 dollars. prize picks daily fantasy sports made easy all right let's get uh, brian back on the show continue this conversation and jump into Listen, Brian, if there's one thing we've talked about more than needing defense alignment, it's needing defensive backs and vice versa. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about Trey McNutt, the 2025 cornerback, uh, receiver, athlete, whatever you want to call him, out of Cleveland, Ohio, four-star player, really, really highly recruited already, was on campus last weekend, watched the, the big win over Nebraska in overtime. Thoughts on Trey McNutt, the player? Let's start there before we get into the recruitment. He's a lot like some of the kids they had at Cincinnati that had some size on the perimeter that could play some man coverage. 
he could play cover three and cover four, cover two, whatever you want. But if you can play cover one, everything else takes shape. And he's a kid that if you want to just play him receiver, look, Wisconsin probably needs a few of those the last time I checked. He could go that route as well. Here's the, here's the deal, though. This is a national recruit. Georgia has offered this kid, and he's from northern Ohio. What does that tell you? He's a dude. Ohio State, Michigan, Notre Dame, Penn State, whatever he wants to do, he can. But the Badgers did get him on campus. This is step one. I talked about this, like uh, the DB they got from Alabama. He's really good, but he's not ranked super high, and Bama didn't go after him. Do you really think Wisconsin would have got a kid that Bama targeted early at DB? With Nick Saban there? Probably not. But that's okay. You work your way up. Mm-hmm. Now you're looking at a scenario where if they can start getting these kids on campus early in the process, because he's a junior, maybe you can flip the switch because they're, they're going to be able to sell playing time. Like Ohio State's got the number one pass defense in the country this year. They're really good. But are you going to walk in there and play? Eh, he could play a lot earlier at Wisconsin. This is where the games begin. Why do you go to this school over that one? It's a battle that you have to find a way to win if you're Wisconsin if you're going to climb the ladder and just to put it in perspective, Wisconsin fans are probably not happy about the record this year, but with Oregon, Washington, UCLA and USC coming into the conference, Mm -hmm. it's going to get a lot harder. You those schools throw the football. You must be able to sign big time DBs every year. If not, you're going to be a team that's 500 to eight and four. And that's going to be as good as it gets. They got to find a way to get some kids like Trey and this is a good sign, man. Again, they got him on the campus before his junior year ended. That's huge for the Badgers. And you mentioned uh, the film is really fun with him. Long, rangy athlete, long yeah. arms, fast, uh, great with the great with the ball in his hands in space. You know, yes, great ball skills. Where where is he best? Is he best at that cover? I mean, is he best at the long range corner? Safe. He's playing safety. He's great at receiver. I guess it would depend on his demeanor. You'd have to know him. Safeties are a little different. Because corner, you you don't have to know a lot with what everybody else is doing. Just some safety sometimes they want you to know everything so you can move guys around. But that's a big ask. You got to know the playbook, and you're the guy on Friday night that not necessarily going out with the fellas. So I don't know what he's like, but athletically, yeah, he can play either one. I I could totally get seeing him like at Iowa in their defense. He might be more valuable because you know they play that straight cover too. Their safeties are very, very important. Mm-hmm. They've got a way. I mean, they got the one Cooper Jean kid right now, but usually they got some 5'11 kids that just play hard at corner and they zone it up and the safeties make the plays. Well, this kid could be that, but I also think he could be in like an old school Florida State man coverage, here we come kind of defense. He could do that too. So when you can mix and match with kids like this, it changes your defense. And they've got the right kind of guys on the staff. Obviously, the head coach knows a little thing or two about D. I think that's where you're at, man. You, you've got to get that next notch. You've got to get one of these guys at least every other year. Or, again, you're going to be 6-6 six and six to 8-4 and four because you're going to get scored on. Even with those coaches, if you can't cover on the perimeter, all those games with Ohio State, I mean, that's an extreme, but it's going to be that way. Teams are just going to try to beat the Badgers outside the numbers. Talk to me about – the potential draw of having Luke Fickle on the staff as a, as an Ohio guy, right? He coached at Ohio state. He's got a ton of connections there. Is this the type of, of player that maybe Wisconsin is better positioned to in now with that coaching staff with Luke Fickle? That's huge. Look, there are certain high schools that I have to call if I'm going to practice or this or that, because I don't know the guys. There are certain practices that I show up even for a game. And like the AD will come up from behind me and just put like thing over my, like they know they don't care, but just to be official, they'll put a little media thing on me. When Fickle walks into a high school in Ohio, is there one that they don't know him? It matters. That's going to be something he has to take advantage of. And here's the deal. I, I know this from talking to people on, around Ohio State. That state's not as good as what it was 20 years ago because population changes and all that, but it's still pretty damn good. But the Buckeyes are also really trying to hit Maryland, North Carolina. Florida. Like the kids are really trying to flip right now is from North Carolina. That's not what I grew up with. Hmm. But that leaves the door open. Michigan, Wisconsin, Indiana, Purdue, anybody else to at least take a swing. If you get a kid on campus, anything's possible. Like Michigan State under D'Antonio made a living off that. They killed it in Ohio. Took a ton of three-star kids and redshirted everybody. And they won with junior seniors and fifth-year seniors. So this is Probably a little bit of what they're doing, but, I mean, McNutt, Ohio State wants. Let's be clear here. 
if you can get into that ballpark this quickly, then your program is headed in the right direction. Uh, last question here on McNutt, and nobody wants to hear moral victories, right? Nobody really cares about that. But you did talk about it, and you mentioned it briefly. I want to kind of expand on it. The idea of just getting, as a Wisconsin, getting a kid like this on campus. Because he can go anywhere for a visit. Like, he's not just going to Wisconsin because he's bored. Yeah, I'm guessing that they probably targeted him early. There's probably either somebody in the back office at Wisconsin has it. Like Shaker Heights, I think, is the high school he's at. But that's suburban Cleveland. Forget which school he's at. I think it's Shaker Heights. But they probably have a direct connection there. But at the same time, so I could go to Alabama this weekend. So I could go to Florida State this weekend. They did something right. I don't know what it is, but that is huge. And I think that their style of play at Cincinnati and then Fickle was part of those staffs that did really well prior to Urban getting there. I I think that that's got to carry some weight, right? They put guys in the NFL at his spot. If it didn't, I'd be kind of worried about McNutt. Like, what what are you doing? You need to <laughs> need to consider schools that have developed cornerbacks and help them get paid. So the right. best corner on the planet played at Cincinnati. So, yeah. I mean, that's, that's how I look at it. Uh, let, let's shift gears then. Because if we haven't talked about needing more depth at cornerback and in the defensive back we have talked about needing some dudes on the defensive line again oh, Lord, yes <laughs> and again and again uh let's talk about ernest willer jr so four star defensive end 6'3 255 coming out of Braden in florida he's going to come visit wisconsin december 1st so again a guy they're getting on campus good offer list uh what can you tell us about the game with with willer he's unique because i don't know if he's going to end up strong side weak side or be a, a guy that moves around the good thing is if like what, what Fickle has run traditionally, and I don't know all the ins and outs of what they're trying to do long-term, but he could be a kid that in a three-man line puts his hand in the door or stands up, and in a four-man line could be that weak side or strong side end and be a pass rusher either way. He's 250 to 260. A great kid. Met him at IMG at, at an event once. Recruited by everybody from the outset, Ohio State included, which that's all you really need to know. And he's very strong at the point of attack. He's going to be able to hold his ground against big guys. This is the kind of player, again, much like Trey McNutt, that if you're going to compete with Ohio State, you have to beat recruits that Ohio State wants. Ohio State wants Mr. Willer, and so does like Penn State, Maryland, et cetera. And here's the other part. I don't know if it was random, but the running back, was it James? I forget the kid's name from Maryland that they got. Oh, Jones, Dylan Jones. Jones. If you start getting kids out of D.C., it has one of the highest propensities to send kids to the NFL of any area in the country per capita. If you start getting kids out of Baltimore to D.C. area, that changes your program. Hmm. That's something else to look at. And maybe it's an area they're targeting. Weather is not as big a factor. A lot of parochial schools, private schools, charter schools. I think that might be something you see the Badgers try to do because they're, it's going to be harder to get kids out of Miami than it is D.C. So. Just something to think about as well. Let me ask you with Willer. Um, he's got visits set up right now from what I from what I was able to see to Ohio State, Wisconsin, and Maryland. Do you see him? Why is he – do you see him leaving that SEC footprint? And if so, is there a reason you, you could pinpoint there? Well, I mean, D.C. is not SEC. It's north of it. But, like, he's got options to go to those programs. But he was at IMG for a little while and went back north. I just don't think he wants to be in the South. Right. Okay. It's just a fit thing. And he's a really chill, laid back guy. Maybe it just wasn't for him. I, I don't know. I don't know much about DC. I've never been there uh, to hang out, but I don't know. Maybe he just likes the big 10, the three visits. You know, you go by what the kids do, not what they say. Yeah. He's got three big 10 officials. Probably going to play in the big 10. Talk to me about the upside. How, how good could he be? Maybe where, where does he comp out in terms of um, raw physical tools with the other high-level defensive linemen you've seen? Well, this is a kid that can be as good as he wants, and it really comes down to how big he gets and what the training staff at Penn State or Wisconsin, whatever it ends up being. I have no idea. What do they want him to do? He's 250-plus now. Does he end up playing three-tech? Like Penn State has a great defense this year. They run up the field. They try to get downhill. Does he want to do that? Um, does he want to do with what Wisconsin's doing a little more? I'm guessing again, long-term mix it up three man and four man line. I'm going to guess they're going to do that. Some, it depends because I don't think he has a limitation there. He's either way. 
And that's the great news. It's just, okay, well, do do that on 4-3. Then on the next play, a 3-3-5 situation, we're going to stand you up. You know, he, he can do either. So he could be a national top 100 kid. He's on that border, depending on which ranking you look at. And again, the personality and all that adds to it. Yeah, this is the kind of guy you want anchoring your edge. So yeah, Wisconsin would do very well. Definitely need the depth there. All right, we're going to take one more quick break, come back, talk about another 2025 prospect that's visited Wisconsin a couple times now, big time talent at a position of, kind of surprisingly at a position of need for Wisconsin. We're going to talk about that next on Locked On Badgers. But first, a quick break for our friends of the show over at LinkedIn. I've talked about it before. Listen, this is LinkedIn is a great sponsor for our recruiting segment because running a business is all about recruiting talent, getting the right pieces on your team. And every hire feels like a high stakes wager. You've got to find the right people. You can't waste the time on people who either aren't qualified or are going to not put in the work that you need for your business. That's why LinkedIn exists. This professional network that is screening tools to get rid of the people that have no business coming in the door for you, right? No business wasting your time, wasting their time. LinkedIn is ranked, uh, ranked number one among small businesses, once again, for delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. And they have simple tools to get the right people in with the right experience. And it's something I've used professionally as just to expand my network. It's something my company uses to find talent. It is an incredible resource for everybody from hiring managers to people looking for jobs. Right now, if you go to LinkedIn Jobs, they'll help you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. All right, let's continue on with Brian Smith. Uh, one more guy I want to talk about here, Brian. And again, as always, we are smarter because you are here, my friend. Matty Augustine, uh, 2025 offensive tackle, 6'7". He's up to 290 I've seen now. High three-star kid coming out of Connecticut, Greenwich, Connecticut. Big, long athlete. Has been to Wisconsin yeah. twice now. Uh, what did you see when you turned on the film with uh, Matty Augustine? I've seen him a couple of times, and he's somebody that I was alerted to. I mean, I live in Florida, but kids like this – that have that length that are kind of just now coming into their own. A lot of teams are interested in them because they're not filled out. They're not maxed out. They can change their body, their mentality, and their style of play once they reach the collegiate level instead of having to like reshape them and get rid of bad habits. He's at a good program academically, socially, and he's a kid that just looks like, you know, he's a ball of clay that needs to be cultivated, but you can't teach the measurables. And like he's, Quite a bit like Resky in the sense that he could probably play tackle or guard, whatever you wanted, but I like him at tackle. Guys that are 290 and up that can play tackle, man, that's – every school needs them. Look at the transfer portal already. You know, anybody that – you you go around to any article, whatever site, where's an offensive tackle at? Mm -hmm. They don't go out in the portal much. you got to get them out of the high school ranks. It's very important to win these battles. That's why it was important for the Badgers to get Resky. If they were to get this kid, you'd have your bookends – Whichever one plays left, so be it. But you'd be good to go long term. Well, and that's kind of what I wanted to ask you um, in, in in terms of this recruitment here with Maddie. He to me, he compared very favorably to Resky. Like he he looks yeah. very similar from a build standpoint, from a movement standpoint. Also, not playing Connecticut high school football is a little underrated, but it's not also not a hotbed of talent. Right. So it, it's very similar to me, and also ranks similarly. They are. They're almost like long lost brothers. Yeah. And that's okay because six five plus and two ninety, and they're both over that in height. What are we what are we losing here? Nothing. You you you've got what you want. If you can keep getting those guys, not all of them will hit, but for Wisconsin to be a program that wins nine plus moving forward with again UCLA, SC, Oregon, and Washington coming in the league, they got to dominate in the trenches and get better outside. If you're not dominating at offensive line, what are the chances that you're going to be favored against SC? What are the chances you're going to be favored against Oregon, the way they're recruiting? I mean, it's insane. So you have to be able to get guys that can control the clock, present the running game, and give you a chance on third and six to complete some passes. That's what they're trying to do. It, it's a straightforward thought, but they're in the game early too. That's something else. that I don't know how much Wisconsin fans really follow recruiting, but the new trend is if you're not deep into the underclassmen recruiting the fall of their junior year, chances you getting those kids aren't very good, unless your name is LSU, Georgia, or something, and it's a local kid. Especially when you're recruiting across the country like Wisconsin is with Augustine, you're not you're not going to get them unless you get in early. 
He didn't know anything about Wisconsin. He's, he lives in Connecticut. So this is a good sign. It, it's not an easy way to go, but you got to go where the talent is, especially tackle, man. You can follow it wherever. Just look at the NFL draft. So many tackles go high, and there's a reason for it. I know you had mentioned, uh, did you hear any other schools involved here? I think maybe before the show we had talked, you said Notre Dame potentially. Yeah, Michigan. This is a like a traditional Midwest kid. He'll have, you know, the Georges of the world are recruiting too, but Notre Dame really likes him. I think Penn State or Ohio State, I forget which one is also right there. Might have been Michigan. I can't remember, but Notre Dame is probably the one to watch. Okay. No, this is good stuff, man. Um, you heard it here first. Brian thinks we're going to get McNutt, Willer, um, lock them all down. Uh, really quick thought on this. Wisconsin <laughs> playing Minnesota this weekend. Um, is there a better college football trophy than Paul Bunyan's axe? Hmm, that's a good question. Hmm. I don't know. Like some of these things, are, there's which one's the pig? Which one is that? Iowa, Minnesota? Uh, which Floyd one? Floyd Rosedale. Yep. Th- which does not compare to the axe. Floyd or Rosedale. It's just um, like they just just weird crap. Oh, it's, some of them are super bizarre, right? Um, <laughs> but Wisconsin, Minnesota this weekend for the axe. Um, and by the way, if Wisconsin wins, to give you credit here, Wisconsin will finish seven and five, which is literally the record that you predicted for this team this season. And many people started throwing things at the computer when they heard me say that. But yep. It's uh, by the way, quarterback for Wisconsin. Any chance that he comes back in twenty four? Is he done? No, he's done. So the starter Tanner Mordecai is done. Okay. Next year, I have no idea because you're, you're it's year two and all that. But quarterback, man, that's just so important. It's really hard to say. Recruiting's headed in the right direction. Now they need to hit the portal. Yeah, well, we're excited for that. I'm going to ping you when that portal action starts happening too. Get your thoughts on it. I just wrote a portal article a little bit ago, so it's it's already started, brother. Let's do it. He is Brian Smith. This is Locked On Badgers, brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs today. Anyway, on Wisconsin, thank you so much, Brian. As always, thank you for your insight. And if I don't talk to you or, or anyone listening to the show before, have a great Thanksgiving to, to everybody out there. Same to you, brother. Thank you. On